Hello and welcome to Politics Tech Lightning. I have a three letter word for you DNS. And then you add the words in Azure is a breeze, and that's exactly how I will make you feel after watching this video. So let's get started. Before we start putting up a nice drawing, we need to define three concepts within Azure. First, we have Azure DNS, DNS zones. Then we have Azure Private DNS. And third, we have Azure provided DNS. So let's start with the first one, the Azure DNS beast. This is a hosting server for DNS domains, which provide name resolution by using Microsoft Azure infrastructure. Key to know here is that it's just a DNS service. Your domains are hosted in Azure for record management. This is not a service where you can buy a domain name. For that part, you can use App Service Domain in Azure or any third party registrar. You can create a public and private domain name. The private domain names in this instance is not linked to Azure Private DNS. Here it just means that you can use your custom DNS domain names. One big limitation is that Azure DNS does not support DNSSEC. With Azure DNS, you get a DNS zone with name servers that are reachable from the public internet. Let's say you buy a domain name, poltrixtechlightning.com. You now want to use this amazing domain and create an Azure DNS zone. Now, this is quite easy using the portal. Try search using Azure DNS and you will see absolutely no results. Then search using DNS and here it will pop up as you can see. So the name in the Azure portal is DNS zones. Click on the plus to create a new zone, select a resource group name, and then the name politicstechlighting.com, and then you can click on create. Once finished, you will see all the details of the zone. Here are the NS name server records, which are the DNS servers that can be used to look up this domain. Then we have the SOA, the start of authority record, which is required for every DNS zone in order to be compliant with the IEFT standards. It stores details on the zone, for example, the email address of the administrator, when the domain was last updated and more information. Click the plus on the record set. Let's add the host name of Paltrick Azure. TTL, time to live here is mentioned in hours and we will put an arbitrary IP address. So you've seen the A record is now created. Let's test it. We open up command prompt and run the command and let's look up poltrickazure.poltricktechlightning.com and we use the name server that was specified for Azure. Now this is a DNS service aimed for virtual networks within Azure. There are some key benefits to these servers. For example, it removes the need for custom DNS solutions. You can manage the DNS zones and look up natively in Azure without additional DNS servers. It supports all common DNS records, A, quadruple A, CNAME, MX, PTR, SRV and TXT records automatic hostname record and management, Azure automatically maintain hostnames in the linked virtual networks. They can be shared between VNets. Azure Private DNS can be shared with multiple VNets. Split Horizon DNS support. You can have zones with the same name that resolves to different answers from a virtual network and from the public internet. For example, if a VM in Azure may need to get the internal IP address of a server. A public client might need to get the IP address of the application gateway using the same hostname. That's Split Horizon. With some of the benefits mentioned here, let's jump into the demo and see how it works. In the Azure portal, search for DNS and click on Private DNS Zones. Click on Create. You get to choose a resource group and the name of the zone. We'll use Potrix Tech Lightning here as well. Let's review and create. 
This goes fairly quickly, but takes a bit longer to create compared to an Azure DNS zone. If we have a look at the records in this zone, we see one important difference. There are no NS name server records. You also cannot create them. It doesn't show up in the list here. And the reason for this? These zones are only re reachable from within a virtual network. You need to link the private DNS zone to a virtual network. Virtual machines and other Azure services in that VNet can then automatically register themselves in this zone. In order to link them, you just need to click on virtual network links on the left hand side, click on add, enter a name of the network link and choose which virtual network to link. Now, the resources in that virtual network are now able to query the Azure private DNS zone. You have an option here to tick the box Enable Auto Registration as well. Azure Provided DNS. This is just a very basic DNS service in Azure. The DNS zone and records are automatically managed and controlled by Azure. You cannot customize it, and the DNS suffix on the machines they cannot be changed. It is used for very simple and easy setups. So. Keep these three concepts in your head and the rest what I'm about to tell you will fall into place. Now let's look at how we would go about this in a real life scenario within Azure. First of all, we will put out the infrastructure. We will start with the on-premise environment to the left. On the right side, we have the cloud, more specifically Azure in this case. We'll be working with the traditional hub and spoke model. Make sure you watch my videos on the Microsoft Enterprise Scale Landing Zone. Link to those videos is in the description below if you want more details on this hub and spoke model. In the spoke where our application lies, we will set up a VNet, subnet, and there will be a place for a virtual machine. We'll also create a storage account in this subscription, which we intend to use as an Azure files with a private endpoint. In the on-premise environment, we have a Windows Active Directory domain services with DNS. Let's call this domain patrickstechlightning.com. We also have one lonely developer sitting there with his workstation. In addition, we have a server on premise right here. Let's assume the following requirements for name resolution. No new DNS zones should be set up for Azure. Machines from on premise should resolve host names in Azure. Virtual machines in Azure should resolve hostname in Azure and on-premise. Services in Azure, such as private endpoints, example for Azure files, should be resolvable from all environments. We need some supporting DNS infrastructure for all this to work. Let's put in an Azure firewall and a Linux server running DNS bind. In addition, we'll also set up Azure Private DNS and link it to the central hub VNet. Now, let's move on to some scenarios. The Azure Virtual Machine needs to be able to resolve the hostname of the on-premise server. If the VM in Azure is a member of the Active Directory Domain Services domain, it will be registered in the domain and have the IP address of the Active Directory DNS server assigned. This server can be located either on-premise or in the cloud. When the Azure VM tries to look up the on-premise service, it will use the DNS server that it has been assigned. When the on-premise server tries to look up the VM in Azure, the IP address is already registered in DNS. So we have already met the first three requirements. It's also possible to use the Azure Firewall as a DNS proxy. Important to note is that it functions as a DNS proxy and not as a conditional forwarder which is why we have the Linux bind DNS servers here. They act as a conditional forwarder. That means that it can forward queries for a specific domain name to a certain server. Example, all DNS lookups for potextechlightning.com will be sent to that specific on-premise DNS server. How about if the on-premise server needs to resolve the IP address of the private endpoint of the storage account for Azure files? The private endpoint is registered in Azure Private DNS. Azure Private DNS is only accessible from this VNet. That's why we have the Linux bind server. The request goes from on-premise 
to add your firewall DNS proxy to the Linux bind DNS server who can talk and get the details from the Azure private DNS. DNS in any environment is a very major topic and requires careful architecture and consideration. I hope I've given you a good starting block, so take this information with you. You now know how to think about DNS, which options there are, and how to apply them. Until next time, I wish you the best. See ya!